So, John Turturro, thank you very much for agreeing to meet with us for Hofstra University and uh, iItaly.org. The last time we met actually was at Hofstra where you presented Francesco Rossi's film, The Truce, uh, portraying Primo Levi. So from Primo Levi to La Canzone Napoletana, you obviously <laughs> Uh, interested in Italian culture and uh, kind of universal interest. So what generated this, this, this new project? You know, my goal was to do something that, that could be entertaining within the limited means we had and not to do just an historical document. And they were very emphatic at first saying, you know, I had to do this. I had to do an immigration song. And I said, listen, guys, if I'm going to make a movie, you know, I don't have to do anything. I don't even have to make the movie. And so that's the distance, because I had a little distance from it. What I was trying to do is, you know, to have enough variation that I could uh, keep a viewer's attention who didn't know that world that well. And uh, so that was my idea with Federico. But then as once we, we started shooting, you know, I, I, you don't know if a singer can sustain a song on camera, but the people from that part of the world are really great storytellers. And natural actors. And they just, I mean, that, listen, Italy is a country of that, but that particular city is like everybody's a star, you know? And it's a very unique place. It really is. Yeah, I was struck by how, how poignant and powerful the film is on, on different kinds of levels. You said you didn't want to make a work of history, but it is a work of it history is. and cultural anthropology. Yeah. Yeah. And it is a biography of the city in a certain sense. But what really struck me was that it avoids all of the cliches of the tourist industry images of Naples and the sentimentality. And it, it really captures the, the contradictory nature uh, and, and the cultural spectacle that you find all over the place, right. uh, in every corner of Naples. And it's, it's like so woven into the, the history and the fabric and, and the character of the people that it just naturally expresses itself in the song. Right. Right. I didn't want to make a history lesson. I think uh, a problem is, you know, lots of people in you know, older countries, they want to live in the past. And you've got to make sure that you connect to the moment now and I wanted to have live artists as much as I could. He said, you know, you're making a movie about Naples. And I said, well, I, I was hoping, yeah. but through its music, without too much talking. And so, you know, I only shot this film, I have 23 musical numbers, and we cut out to, I shot the entire film, uh, we shot the entire film, Marco Pontecorvo, the director of photography, and Simona Paggi, the editor, but we, we only filmed it for 21 days which is a miracle. Uh, we edited it over a year, and, uh, but uh, you know, we have old footage too, so that helped us. You know, uh, uh, but uh, it just was uh, one of these adventures. There's a lot of, you know, we gotta have movement, and it's really in the arrangements. It really is, it's in the arrangements. And so we, but the performers far exceeded uh, my expectations, and I, have rarely been around, I said this before, but rarely been around such a talented group of people in a film. So when I went to the Presepio, the famous Cuciniello Presepio in San Mignato, and I'm looking at the Presepio and I realize I've seen these faces in John's film. I've seen these faces on the streets of Naples today. Well, you know, I mean, there's a reason. They had their own film industry. They, I mean, one of the earliest film industries was in Naples. And they had a huge, they, they produced a huge amount of films in Neapolitan. It was interesting that, th that that place had its own film industry because it also had its own theatrical tradition and musical tradition that they all came out of. And so you see some of these performers, and people will still say, well, the best actors are from Naples. And, you know, if you have a press conference in Naples, you really can't believe it because you say, like, this is something that you would have seen in a movie by Monticelli or something. It's a cultural spectacle. And they do it in a way that's it's just innate. Yeah, and I think one of the things that comes out in your film is that it's, it's still a, a vibrant city. It's a living city. It's a city that, unlike some other cities in Italy that have become sort of like parodies of themselves, right. 
that it's a city where people live and they and they love and they die and they and they have they make love and and Naples is I say the the earth city of Western civilization is the city of cities it's the most urban of cities and now it's in its third millennium so you have to ask yourself a question you know what might other European or American cities look like when they're 3,000 years old and to me it seems like Naples has figured out you know, the conundrum, the paradox of civilization. How do a lot of people live together and create a vibrant culture? And they figured it out. Because you see the problems of the past and the problems of the future. You see a place that some of the first, you know, tenements or slums were, were, were made there, the buildings in those alleyways. And that's why they're masters at improvisation. And they're masters of it, you know, and they can move really quickly and solve a problem if, if they want to solve the problem. Uh, so you are seeing a city that's futuristic yeah. and at the same time, uh, uh, you know, you, the, you have this sense of, the, you know, the past. It seems like the stereotype of Southern Italy and Naples is that, you know, everybody's ready to burst into song when in, when in truth, it seems like there's, there's always this subterranean current of, of melancholy, you know, in the city and, and in the culture. I, you know, I think that's, some, that's a part of it, but I also do think that's become a cliche of it because the energy that, that goes against that, and that's what I kind of was attracted to with the song Vesuvio, Vesuvius, you know, uh, uh, that I felt like that, that was like, you know, was more of a, an active response to it. And I wanted to not avoid that, but there was so much of it that I thought that will kill the film. And I wanted to see if there was a balance to that, and, I, and there is a balance of it. There is, because those guys do it and then they go on. Yeah, which one of the things that struck me was Rise when he was interviewed saying that, yeah. you know, you're from Naples, so you are the custodian of all these different cultures, so you are a citizen of everywhere and nowhere at the yeah. same time. So it's a very cosmopolitan and very contemporary way of thinking about citizenship in the world. Yeah, they really do. And the people that I know from there, they're so funny. So, the sense of humor is so deadly. It's one of the things yeah. that Italian-American culture has lost. The sense of irony, the sense of humor. I think you're right on, the, right, on the, right on it. And it's like, they don't understand, like, that's one side of the coin. And then they flip the coin. And, you know, these are people, you know, who came here with the poor and they made something. You said, the, the improvisation is like the poor making the best of their day. Or it's, and they were able to flip it and say, okay, we're going to have a good time, but we only have these three things to eat. The sense of humor is essential. And yes, I think the, the Italian-American community sometimes, when they lost, you know, the next generation came in, it became, it became smaller and not bigger sometimes, culturally. They may have assimilated, but you can assimilate to the point where you don't know who you are and that's, if you know, you know, Camilleri says, if you know who you are, then it helps you not be afraid. So maybe we can conclude by, by, by thanking you for giving us, for giving the Italian American community uh, something that we might have lost. That I, w I was afraid that we had lost it for a while. And you've given us this work of art that reminds us uh, where we come from. You know, I, I hope people go out and, and uh, you know, open themselves up and go see the film. And, uh, you know, the film was done quite, quite well in Italy and the CD. And I think that uh, it's something to kind of reawaken your senses a little bit. And I, I'm, it's, I'm in a privileged position to be, to be a conduit of these artists, really, in this place. So for me, it was one of the best experiences I've had in a long time. Well, thank you very much. Thanks, we look forward to your next project. Thank you. Thank you.